Today I want to show you how to make a flashback arrestor for a hydrogen generator system. Very easy, very simple, quite effective, and quite cheap for the most part. Now, I believe this is only good for like 1 to 2 liters per minute or 1 to 3 liters per minute. Don't go over 2 liters per minute with these flashback arrestors. At least that's what I've heard. I haven't tested that personally. Now, what you're going to need is uh, go to the hardware store in your local fish store, your pet store. First pet store, pick up some half inch in diameter fish tank bubblers, air hose bubblers. Yeah. I picked up some better quality ones. So... They don't crush very easy, they don't break apart very easy, and I find that people are cutting these top nipples off and drilling out the top. I personally haven't done that yet, but whenever I pull these tops off and I try to conceal them, it makes the airflow restricted. So I personally don't suggest doing that. Um, the way I found to build them, where you still get a pretty good airflow, I can, these are mine when they're completed. I don't know if you can even see down in there. You got the nipple down in there. I actually have it all siliconed, all shut at the tops. And I got another one in that end. I can't open these right now because they're all fresh. I got to wait for the silicone to dry. But when it's dried, you can open them. And you can you want to open them because you want to regular regularly check to make sure that they haven't broken apart. Because if you are let, running larger flow than what I suggested, which I wouldn't do, then you're going to want to check these every single time before use. Make sure that they're not broken apart or anything like that. If you use cheap ones especially, because the cheap ones will break apart fairly easy. You can find them at any local pet store. I found mine at uh, Walmart. I find that they're pretty good quality ones there at Walmart. Now, my ends... I just went to um, Princess Auto or some kind of a car auto parts place or some place that has compressor fittings. And, oops, sorry. Here, I'm going to put this down for a second. Actually, it'll be more stable if I put it down. <laughs> it's only me doing this, so sorry, guys. Bear with me. Half inch in diameter. And when you take your fish tank bubbler, It'll fit right in there with the nipple right down the hole. I know you can't see that. Sorry, guys. I'm using my cell phone right now. Um, anyways, I find that using some kind of silicone. And you take the silicone and coat it right around. Make sure it's nice and at least sticking to the bottom piece and don't really have it bulging out past the diameter of your bubbler because then it'll just go down the sides of the casing when you slide it in. You don't want the silicone covering up all the side of it because then it's just going to make it so the air won't flow through it. So, see, you got a I got a bunch of silicone there. Now I'm going to take my tip. This won't be the cleanest. It's easier without the camera and everything else and I've already built a couple so this is just to show you guys real quick and then you just kind of carefully slide it down in there and then just kind of firmly push it and just kind of twist it side to side a little bit just so you can center it and make sure it's nice and centered make sure you don't pull up at all if you do the silicone will probably bubble up and cause an air pocket and the air will flow through outside of the silicone. You're doing this so you can seal it around that air bubbler tip. This tip here. You want to make sure that it doesn't, you don't put so much in there so, so that it'll go past the, the hole because you need that hole open. Because down in there, that hole is still open. So then the HHO gas, the hydrogen gas, can flow up through. And then the bubbler it stops the air from flowing through, which stops it from igniting and backfire or backflowing through the tubes. At least that's how 
I was told it works. I personally am not sure. I'm not a scientist. I'm just going with what works. Lots of people are building these, and this is just my method. So I find that works pretty good. And for the centerpiece right here, these are actually, uh, I think, one and a half inch or two inches long. One second, I'll measure that. I think they're two inch. Oh, actually, they are only one inch long. Okay. These ones are only one inch long, but you're best to take your bubblers with you and try to fit two of them in there because you're going to fit one this way and then you're going to fit the other one this way because you want one in each cap. So when you tighten it down, I found that with my setup, when I put them in the lid and I tighten them down, they tighten down tight against each other like this. Then there's no air pockets other than maybe a little bit around the outside of the casing here, but there's no air pockets in it up around here and it's all sealed because of the silicone and there's no... Um, extra whatever here because you got that tube and the silicone in there so it's not going to pass through this piece on the outside of the casing and jump through and go on the outside over here because you got the silicone sealing it on both ends so these do work um, I don't have my HHO generator running at the moment or going at the moment at all it's actually it blew up on me which is why I'm doing these I should have done them beforehand I just I was stubborn and Thought that because I had a larger flow and one-way valve and ball ball valve and everything else, I thought it was okay. I thought it would be okay. I was dead wrong. I almost killed myself. So, be safe, guys. Always use flash brack protector. The other ones I found I'm building is these. I actually went to Home Depot because they have a little bit larger selection than Home Hardware or anything like that. Home Depot has these ones, which are, I believe, one-eighth of an inch. And then they got these caps, which are perfect little caps. Now what I'm going to do with these ones is I'm going to take some brass wool, fine brass wool, and I'm going to stuff these ones with fine brass wool, nice and tight, right from tip to tip. <clears throat> and then I'm going to seal these ones up too. And then make sure you, I'm pretty sure you wet these and just a little bit of water before each use and you dump, tap all the water out, take and tap it on something and get all the water out. You just want it wet in there. So that way the flame can't travel through the, through it and burn anything. I guess you can use steel wool too. And that one apparently burns. So if you do use that one, make sure you wet it. Brass wool and bronze wool. I think brass wool, I was told or found out that was supposed to be the best one. So use the brass wool inside of these ones and only use these ones for a low flow. If you're going to have a higher flow, get a bigger one and stuff it full, like maybe a half a foot or longer. And make sure it's stuffed real good. Now, I'm just doing a low flow ones and I'm going to run two of these in line with two of these in line and... I should be safe for testing purposes because I'm just trying to set something up for a vehicle for a family member. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and always be safe. Make sure you run them. Don't do what I did. Have a good day.